The Indian Ordnance Factories Service IOFS is a civil service of the Government of India. IOFS officers are gazetted Group A Defence Civilian Officers under the Ministry of Defence. They are responsible for the management of the Indian Ordnance Factories, which provide the defence production capabilities of India. Composition During the colonial times, the administrative service of ordnance was known as the Indian Ordnance Service. It was constituted in the year 1935. It had only European officers in the years that followed. They were engineering graduates or military officers who had to undergo specialized training prior joining the service. In 1939, there was only one Indian officer and the remaining 44 officers were of European origin. IOFS was reconstituted in its present form in 1954 with the Cadre Controlling Authority of Ministry of Defence, Department of Defence Production with a Cadre size of 1760 posts. The source of recruitment was through direct recruitment 60%, by promotion 40% and no lateral entries. IOFS is a multidisciplinary composite cadre consisting of technical, engineers civil, electrical, mechanical, electronics technologists chemical, metallurgical, textile, leather and non-technical, administrative science, law, commerce, management and arts graduates. Technical posts comprise about 87% of the total cadre. The doctors surgeons and physicians serving in OFB belong to a separate service known as the Indian Ordnance Factories Health Service IOFHS. IOFHS officers are responsible for the maintenance of health of the employees, and the hospitals of OFB. They report directly to the IOFS officers. IOFS and IOFHS are the only two civil services under the Department of Defense Production. Topic. OFB's background Ordnance Factories Board is engaged in research, development, production, testing, marketing and logistics of a comprehensive product range in the areas of air, land and sea systems. It comprises 41 ordnance factories, 9 training institutes, 3 regional marketing centers, and 4 regional controllerates of safety, which are spread all across the country. OFB is the world's largest government operated production organization, and the oldest organization run by the Government of India. It has a total workforce of about 164,000. It is often called the fourth arm of defense and the force behind the armed forces of India. It is amongst the top 50 defense equipment manufacturers in the world. Its total sales were at $3 billion crore rupees in 2015-16. Every year, 18 March is celebrated as the Ordnance Factories Day in India. Recruitment <inaudible> 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 The recruitment in the Indian Ordnance Factories as a Group A officer is done by the Union Public Service Commission based on the performance in the Engineering Services Examination and the Civil Services Examination Engineering posts are filled through the Engineering Services Examination, while technologists are selected through interviews by UPSC. Posts in the non-technical streams are filled through the Civil Services Examination. IOFS is the only cadre in which officials are selected by all four means, CSE, SA, interviews and promotions. IOFHS officers are selected through the Combined Medical Services Examination, conducted by UPSC. All appointments to the Group A civil services are made by the President of India. Training National Academy of Defence Production NADP, Nagpur provides training to the IOFS officers in areas of technology, management, public administration as induction and reorientation courses. The induction training program of probationary officers is of 64 weeks, comprising technical, managerial and administrative modules of theoretical, practical and field nature. Classes are held at specialised educational institutions across India. Officer trainees OTs are then sent on Bharat Darshan tour of India, which includes visits to the nuclear, defence, space, industrial and other technical installations of India. 
To understand the nuances of bureaucracy, they are familiarized with the functioning of district, state, national and international bodies, including the Parliament of India. Armed forces attachment with the army, navy, air force and with the police, paramilitary and special forces for better understanding of needs of their customers. To get acquainted with the Indian legal system, they visit the Supreme Court of India. Thus, giving them exposure to all the three arms of the Government of India. Following which, they are sent for on-the-job training to various ordnance factories and are expected to apply the knowledge and experience gained. Examinations are held at the end of the training. The training concludes with interactions with the members of parliament, ministers in charge of the home, foreign and defence ministries, prime minister, vice president and the president of India. IOFS officers are allowed to continue their higher studies at various national institutions such as the IITs, NITs, IIMs, IISC, NITI, NDC, DSSC and DIAT under the sponsored category. They are also trained at these institutes, at the Lal Bahadur Shastri National Academy of Administration, Administrative Staff College of India and the Indian Institute of Public Administration, while in service. The officers are sent to countries which have friendly relations with India, such as the countries of erstwhile USSR, United States, UK, Sweden, Japan, Austria, Germany, Russia, France, Israel, Canada, Czech Republic, South Korea, Singapore etc. Topic functions The main functions performed by IOFS officers while at the Indian Ordnance Factories include product research and development, project management, materials management, production planning and control, quality control, supplies management, industrial safety, labor welfare, personnel management, industrial relations, management and maintenance of residential estates etc. In discharging these functions, the IOFS officers interact extensively with, R&D organizations such as ARI, BARC, BPRD, CSIR, ISRO, DRDO. Quality controlling agencies such as Bureau of Indian Standards, Directorate of Standardization, Directorate General of Quality Assurance Army, Directorate General of Naval Armament Inspection Navy, Directorate General of Aeronautical Quality Assurance Air Force. Inter-services organizations such as Military Engineer Services, Defense Exhibition Organization. Educational institutes such as the IITs, NITs, IIMs, Indian Statistical Institutes. Public sector undertakings of the Ministry of Defense, HAL, BEL, BEML, BDL, MDL, GSL, GRSE, Midhani, other GOVT. PSUs, various Indian and foreign, private as well as government companies. Industrial and trade associations such as CII, FICHI, ASSOCHAM. Ministries such as the Ministry of External Affairs, Ministry of Home Affairs, Ministry of Labor, Ministry of Personnel, Public Grievances and Pensions and others. Besides, in order to meet the day-to-day -day operational requirements of the organization, fulfill various statutory obligations, and ensure the welfare of the workforce employed in the ordnance factories, these officers also interact with the officers of the Indian Armed Forces, Central Armed Police Forces, State Armed Police Forces, Paramilitary Forces of India, Special Forces of India, and other bureaucrats from IAS, IPS, IFS, IFOS, IANAS, IDAS, IRS, IRTS, etc. On deputation IOFS is a participating civil service under the Central Staffing Scheme CSS, which allows bureaucrats to move to any organization, commission, institution, agency, department, ministry of the Government of India on deputation basis excluding posts which are specifically encadred within the organized Group A services, depending on their interests, educational qualifications, seniority, age and other eligibility criteria. IOFS officers also serve at key managerial posts of PSUs and and SEZs, as advisors and secretaries to the Union Cabinet Ministers, Prime Minister and the President of India, as diplomats at various consulates, missions and embassies of India, located abroad, as commissioned officers in the Indian Armed Forces, and as scientists in DRDO. Hierarchy 
Topic Notable officers Narinder Singh Kapani, former IOFS officer, Frank, father of fiber optics, also known as the man who bent light, invented fiber optics that revolutionized telecommunication, power transmission, laparoscopic and endoscopic surgery etc. Named as one of the seven unsung heroes of the 20th century by Fortune magazine for his Nobel Prize deserving invention. Former professor at Stanford, Universities of California at Berkeley, Santa Barbara and Santa Cruz. Has more than 150 patents to his credit. Nalini Ranjan Mohanty, former IOFS officer. Secured All India second rank in the Engineering Services Examination of 1965, served as the Chairman and Managing Director of Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, Director of Kudremak Iron Ore Company, Mahanadi Coalfields, National Aluminium Company Nalco, Bharat Earth Movers BEML. Awarded Padma Shri in 2004 by the Government of India for his role in the development of LCA, Tejas. HPS Aluwalia, former IOFS officer, FRGS. Author, mountaineer, social worker. He is the first Indian to climb Mount Everest. Founder and chairman of Indian Spinal Injury Centre. Awarded Arjuna Award, Padma Shri and Padma Bhushan by the Government of India. Also served as a commissioned officer in the Indian Army and member of Planning Commission, India. K.C. Banerjee, joined as an IOFS officer. Awarded Padma Shri, India's fourth highest civilian honour by the Government of India, presented by the President of India in 1967, for his contributions during the Indo-Pakistani War of 1965 as the General Manager of Rifle Factory Aishapur. O. P. Ball, served as an IOFS officer. Former Additional Director General Ordnance Factories and Member, Ordnance Factory Board. Awarded Padma Shri in 1972 by the Government of India in the Civil Service category for his efforts during the Indo-Pakistani War of 1971. See also Ordnance Factories Board